Hello everyone, I'm HJG White from Utoro and welcome to another episode of Money Talks. In the last week it was announced by the Wall Street Journal that Cineworld are filing for Chapter 11 bankruptcy. Cineworld, which in 2019 had an annual revenue of over 3 billion and a combined free cash flow and dividend of 1 billion, is now apparently insolvent and priced at an overall market cap of 41 million. Solvent is when you have enough cash flow to cover your credit and all your operating expenses and insolvent is when you don't. Insolvent and bankrupt are two words used often interchangeably to mean the same thing. So are Cineworld shareholders doomed? So far all I have to go off here is two statements that are directly from Cineworld. Statement one from Cineworld. Any deleveraging transaction would result in significant dilution of existing equity interests in Cineworld. In other words, reducing the debt of Cineworld, it will result in the existing shareholders getting significantly smaller portion of the company's earnings going forward. When I started making this video, the first thing I wanted to know is, is there more to Cineworld's statement than this? Or anything alluding to the quantity of share dilution? What does significant dilution mean? If I knew what significant dilution was, I could do another cash flow analysis and establish whether I should buy more or even sell my shares if, if it really came to that. By the way guys, this is my first year making YouTube and my goal is to reach 300 subscribers by the end of this month. If you could click the subscribe button, I'd be extremely grateful. Okay, thanks for that. Back to the video. My first instinct was to try and find the original statement from Cineworld. However, when I went to Cineworld's investor relations page and went to the press releases section and read the statement for myself, I really didn't find that there was much missing from this statement. It doesn't indicate at all as to how much share dilution there would be. There is an updated press release in this section of the site now. The strategic options through which Cineworld may achieve its restructuring objectives include a possible voluntary Chapter 11 filing in the United States. As previously announced, any deleveraging transaction would, however, result in very significant dilution of existing equity interests in Cineworld. So again, this does look like Cineworld are looking to deleverage by selling shares, but it's looking to do this without a Chapter 11 filing, if possible. But essentially this isn't any more information than we knew before. So without more information on the share dilution, I can't really evaluate the price per share. What I need to do now is evaluate the risk of holding my current shares in Cineworld. Should I hold or sell? One thing to note here is Cineworld haven't actually filed for bankruptcy yet. Articles only say that they are considering it. And at this point I'm assuming that also. So if they are, could a Chapter 11 bankruptcy filing mean that we, shareholders, lose all of our money? All Chapter 11 bankruptcy filings vary and they're very much dependent on the individual circumstances of the company. What it mainly means to us is that they will get to continue operating despite filing for bankruptcy. One reason Cineworld will continue operating even though it's not paying its creditors is that creditors can only hope to make money from Cineworld if Cineworld is in fact operating. It's not like these cinemas are incredibly valuable on their own. They need to be screening films and selling tickets. However, if Cineworld, the debtor, just suddenly stopped paying its creditors, then Cineworld creditors could arguably just take the business off them. They could take the entire business off them and start taking the cash flows themselves and seizing all the assets immediately. Cineworld filing for bankruptcy first actually gives us the shareholders and Cineworld the business a bit of protection from creditors while lawyers work out how best to restructure the debt. But yes, in short, you can lose your entire position. For an example, we're going to be looking into Blockbuster. What's different about Blockbuster when they filed for bankruptcy in 2010 was they were a loss-making business and were in direct competition with Netflix. Both were ways of renting films at home. What's very different about Blockbuster was the events leading to them filing Chapter 11 were endemic. It's not like a pandemic forced them to shut their stores and studios started releasing less films every year. Sat videos and DVDs were becoming obsolete. And classic stores like HMV that sold DVDs were also going out of business. And as fun as it is going into a store and looking at all the films, an online subscription satisfies most people's day-to-day -day movie needs. 
When the entire business, Blockbuster business, was liquidated, it sold for 320 million to Dish Network. Dish Network wins the bid for Blockbuster. To be honest, I have absolutely no idea why Dish Network even spent this much on it. This 320 million went off to pay a small portion of the 1 billion in debt that Blockbuster had at the time. After the 320 million was paid off the 1 billion, there was nothing left to the shareholders. In fact, the creditors had lost quite a lot of money. Dish Network, who bought it, ultimately did nothing with it. Go to the Blockbuster site and I think there's some link to Dish Network's site. Also fun to note, I found this out today doing research for this video, Apple are one of the eight companies listed as almost filing for Chapter 11 bankruptcy back in 1997. And their share price dropped 80% in one month when thankfully Microsoft jumped in and bought $150 million worth of the stock. And lastly, Microsoft is making an investment in Apple. Microsoft is buying $150 million worth of Apple stock at market price. It is non-voting shares, and they've agreed... <laughs> and they've agreed not to sell them for at least three years. So what this means is, is that Microsoft is going to be part of the game with us as we restore this company back to health, have a vested interest in that stock price going up. Which resulted in significant dilution, but reduced the debt load, and ultimately I think Apple's done pretty well since. So yes, companies most certainly can come back from this, and many have. General Motors is just another one to mention off the top of my head. In Cineworld's instance, their biggest fear, COVID, is kind of just approaching the rear view mirror now. It's not quite in the rear view, but it's getting there. So they can argue that in the right circumstances, their revenues are going to get back to 2019 levels. This is the argument that they need to use to reduce the amount of dilution to pay off the credit. However, in times of low liquidity right, right now, creditors could take hold of the company. In that event, it is possible for shareholders to be completely wiped out. You simply have to pay your creditors. However, in the event that we can't pay them back right now, filing for bankruptcy just gives us protection from the creditors. So if we're continuing to hold for the time being, what are we assuming? We are assuming, first of all, that Cineworld are actually filing for bankruptcy, that they'll restructure this debt by selling off shares or equity. Importantly, we believe that the equity loss will be significant but not wipe us out, and we'll still hold a significant portion of the stock's total earnings. And finally, that the lower footfall is temporary due to a worse late in films. This last one is really important. It doesn't help us right now because we are currently in a period where the slate is bad, but it's really important for later this year when films like Avatar 2 come out. In my opinion, there is no drought in people wanting to see films. My evidence for this is Top Gun Maverick. Released this year is ranked six in the biggest worldwide blockbuster releases of all time, above Avengers Infinity War and Titanic. Also to note, Avatar is one of the top five films above it, which is a good sign for Avatar 2 coming out later this year. What this tells us, I think, is that when films are good, people are still willing to show up. By the way, three of the films that are in the highest grossing list of all time are released in December. The winter months are generally better for cinema. This is another reason that studios are potentially holding back a few of their biggest blockbuster films till later on in the year. This is why I think the issue of football does lie with the studios. Due to COVID, the studios were unsure whether they'd actually be able to release these big blockbuster movies, these really expensive films, in the cinema. So they slowed down production on the largest projects and instead focused on streaming, which was doing really well. Let's just look at the difference in slates from summer 2019 to 2022. And to make this fair, I'm going to ignore Endgame for a second. So for getting Endgame in this list for summer 2019, you have Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, John Wick Chapter 3, 
Godzilla King of Monsters, Spider-Man Far From Home, Toy Story 4, Men in Black International, and Midsummer. Now remember, this is just summer releases. This isn't the whole slate of films for the year. This is just what was available to you in the summer of 2019. If you don't recognize every single film in this list, I will assume that you've been living underneath a rock. A big, heavy, granite rock. Top Gun Maverick this year, granted, big hit of the 2022 summer. But when you look at the rest of summer 2022, it pales in comparison. Lightyear, Doctor Strange, Thor Love and Thunder, and Elvis. Now Jurassic World Dominion came out this year, but it came out early this year, I believe February, so I'm not counting that in summer films. But even with that included, this list pales in comparison to 2019. And these films didn't really particularly do well on IMDb either. When you compare these lists side by side, it's clear to see the issue is not with cinema, it's with films. So what do we need long term? Assuming Cineworld is right and the slate is the issue, can we be confident studios will now return to making big budget movies? To start off, only Netflix, Apple and Disney are streaming focus studios. However, companies like Warner Brothers Discovery and Paramount are both companies that are good at acknowledging that the best margins are when the films go to cinema first and then get released on streaming platforms later. Warner Brothers Discovery CEO has been quoted saying, we will fully embrace the theatrical. We have a different view on the wisdom of releasing director streaming films and we have taken some aggressive steps to course correct the previous strategy. Zavlev said about the previous 2021 pandemic model that was implemented to spike HBO Max subscribers. One of the reasons cinema is so good for studios is because when ticket sales are initially released, studios can take up to 90% of the profits from the ticket sales. In this event, Cineworld make a nice amount on the ticket sales, but then also get to make money selling these people popcorn and coke. I think it's been greatly exaggerated how little Cineworld makes on ticket sales. I think they have different deals with each studio, and I most certainly do believe that they make really good money on blockbuster releases, not just from the sales of popcorn and coke. Anyway, to put these films, these enormous, amazing, blockbuster, high budget movies, direct on a streaming site is to suggest that the streaming platform is what's important and not the films. In fact, to me, it's mind blowing not to consider the additional revenue that could be made from releasing your film with all this extra hype on cinema and then allowing it to go onto your streaming platform later as a sort of notable, awesome event. What's especially silly is on a streaming platform, you get a fixed income almost entirely regardless of the quality of the content that you put on there. I think Cineworld and perhaps more cinema in general have an enormous role to play in streaming platforms' future. Streaming platforms really do need to start recognizing the importance of cinema. Something Warner Brothers Discovery, another stock I own, really does seem to get. So I'm really proud to be holding my shares in City World, even if they go to zero, maybe I'm an absolute idiot. Even if this is for me, my riskiest stock pick of the decade. However, I really can't stress enough how ill-advised it is to get into a stock this risky right now, if you aren't already holding. As Warren Buffett says, the greatest legendary investor of all time, year after year beats the S&P 500. Rule number one is don't lose money. Rule number two is never forget rule number one. Safe to say that I'm going a little bit against Warren Buffett's advice on this one. Also something I want to acknowledge in this video guys, when I made my first video on Cineworld, the price was a lot higher. My average buy-in is $50 per share. And as a few people have asked, yes, I'm still holding, but not much money compared to what it was. Yes, I'm still holding, but obviously the amount I'm holding is not very much now. Now, if I wasn't already holding when I bought in at 50, I'm not sure I'd be buying in now, to be honest. Not because I don't think Cineworld will survive, but because I think there'll be opportunities to buy it at a bargain price in the future when it's a lot less risky. I really think you should wait until safer times. Now, 
I also want to say that this account, this YouTube channel, the reason I'm building it is just so that I can share my information and my due diligence. It's not to give advice or tell you what to buy. But if you did buy based on my videos, I know there's a risk of that when I publish these videos that someone will go on to buy the stock. If you did buy based on my videos, I'm sorry you're having to hold through this. And that being said, I do state in each of my videos that this is not financial advice and is just my due diligence and I mean it. When you invest, you're investing at your own risk. Right, guys, thanks so much for watching another video of mine. If you please could like and subscribe, it'd help me out a lot. Like I said, I'm trying to hit 300 subscribers by the end of this month, but also I'd, like to, I'd love, 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 love to hit 1,000 subscribers by the end of the year. So anything you can do to help me out would be great. Uh, also, if you do subscribe, next Wednesday, I am going to be doing a video on why Michael Burry has closed all of his positions. So if you are interested as to why I think he's done that, then please subscribe and you'll be notified when that video is released. Okay guys, that's all I have to say. Thank you very much. Goodbye.